Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt. This is Prime Analog Records. And uh, today I want to talk about something that's kind of irked me over a while. Uh, now I've heard some disparaging things um, on these uh, jazz purists um, sites and um, saying nasty things, um, deleterious things towards um, somebody who likes um, uh, smooth jazz. And let me tell you, I love smooth jazz. I've been listening to it for 45 years, um, and I think it's amazing. Uh, matter of fact, there's many, many uh, radio stations that are dedicated to smooth jazz all over the country. So, you know, you can say what you want about, uh, about that, but uh, some of the greatest musicians have all started there and have been there in, for years. Um, involved in uh, smooth jazz. So anyway, let me go through some of them and uh, give you a little bit of heads up on what I'm talking about. Um, I heard somebody saying something pretty pretty nasty. It was actually Mazzy who said something about, you know, that this is really shitty jazz and stuff like that. It's not. It's far from it. And to, to totally disparage an entire group because of that, it's ridiculous. This is Spirogyra, and it's amazing. This stuff is amazing, and, and I've got so many albums by them, and they're very diverse. All of them are masters of their instruments, um, and, you know, to, uh, you know, so um, anyway, this is just some of them. Many, many of the smooth jazz era really came into um, uh, existence during uh, the CD era. And that's one of the biggest issues that I have with them is that this stuff came into existence. A lot of it did during the CD era, and it's hard to find LPs on them. However, I did find, you know, this is a great group right here. This is called Sea Level. And Sea Level actually came from um, the breakup of the Allman Brothers. And they've got multiple albums, and like I'm showing you here, and uh, they're pretty. It's pretty wild stuff. It's amazing. It's it's piano driven. It doesn't sound anything country. It doesn't sound anything outside of just pure jazz. And it's uh, and it's more piano driven jazz than when you think of smooth jazz. You think mostly of saxophones and things like that. Uh, speaking of saxophones, here is Dave Sanborn, and Dave Sanborn. Um, is on lots and lots of different um, albums um, that I've listened to for years. And actually, he was one of the, he was almost, if you're, if you're old enough to remember um, when he was, uh, he was a, a guest on uh, David Letterman's show on, on Thursdays, almost for a decade or, or more. So I thought that was kind of interesting and kind of fun. So um, anyway, uh, there's that. Now we have another one that came from, this guy came from the Crusaders, and his name is Joe Sample. And uh, this is, these are amazing albums. I mean, if you can get your hand on this on an LP, you'll be sonically impressed. These are, this is Warner, Warner at its best. Warner Brothers um, had a real big, strong jazz um, contingent. Um, a lot of jazz musicians uh, ran to them because they creatively were very open. Also, Columbia did the same thing. Matter of fact, Columbia um, got going after seeing the big successes um, of, of uh, when they started seeing the successes of Mobile Fidelity early on, they actually created um, a half-speed mastered um, of their own, um, an audiophile um albums. Um, this is Pat Metheny. Pat Metheny, you talk about audiophile albums. These are all audiophile albums. And uh, I saw, actually I saw um, Melinda Murphy, she was flipping by and she had this album. And she didn't actually make mention of it, but <laughs> it's okay. I, I let that slide. Anyway, I've got many, um, many of these albums. Uh, this is actually the, the debut album. It's going for a lot of money now. But this, uh, this is actually was, was his debut album, Pat Metheny's, and uh, Jaco Pastorius was on this as well. Um, these were all recorded on ECM, which uh, ECM is an is a audiophile dream label. 
Um, it's just amazing stuff. Um, it sounds incredible. Actually, I have another one over here that, hang on a second. This very well may be my favorite, favorite one of all. And uh, this is an amazing, amazing album. It sounds so incredible with your, with a great system. Um, now we've got, move on to Earl Clue. Earl Clue is, is an amazing uh, guitarist himself. Actually, I have a collaboration album with him and George Benson that's called Collaboration. It's really amazing. Actually, uh, a quick note. I saw him at um, the West Palm Beach um, Jazz Festival along with uh, Joe Sample. But what I thought was so interesting is me and my buddy we were sitting there watching. We were watching uh, this guy walk out and he just was wearing jeans and kind of a sloppy t-shirt and didn't look like much. And I thought he was just like a roadie tuning up a guitar. And actually it was Earl Clue himself because then he turned on the microphone and you could hear everything. He plays everything acoustic anyway, but they, they mic that. Um, but man, he started up and we we're like, going, oh my gosh, can you even believe it? So that's pretty amazing. And uh, of course, Joe Sample did his set and it was blow, it blew everybody away, but that's, he was a headliner. So another thing that a lot of people will misconceive uh, smooth jazz as is they believe that it's elevator music and that's not it's the farthest thing from that um, I'm sure some slow songs are you know could be misconstrued as that but with the musicianship and things like that that are going on in these it's just definitely not true um, um, I was going to show you this other I have another Joe Sample album here one of the problems with like I said one of the problems with finding all this the smooth jazz, you can go out and find this on CD all day long because most of these were really recorded in the in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, all the way through 2000 to 2010. And uh, <clears throat> most of matter of fact, that's what I've been spending a lot of time and money with. And I don't know if you guys have, and let me know in the comments. But um, I've been spending the last, probably the better part of, five or six or seven years trying to track down all these albums that I had on, uh, on CD um, and want to get them on vinyl. And they trickle out. And um, I'm hoping that some, some of these, um, these labels will start realizing that we want, to see, we want some of these artists on, on, uh, on uh, LPs. Uh, matter of fact, I, I noticed I've, I've replaced some of my Diana Crawls with um, like she just came out with live in paris which i've loved that cd for years but they they finally came out with it on um on lp i think one of the biggest problems is that there were so many they were filling up these cds with 14 songs and stuff like that so it ended up costing the manufacturers multiple amounts of amount money way more than what they thought because they have to put the entire album out there and when they do then it, it becomes, you know, it's a two disc setup. So it's a lot of money and a lot of people, but they don't realize, I think that a lot of us will actually go out and pay for that. We don't have a problem, you know, p paying up for those, you know, albums that are, that, that had a lot of songs on them, um, on the CD. And then you just go ahead and put it on, you know, multiple, uh, albums and we'll pay for it because, uh, we really want that quality. Another thing about smooth jazz, I think, is that it's really great background music if you're going to put that, um, have a dinner party or something like that. It's just wonderful to put on. And you can build a sound, um, what do you call it, a playlist and stuff like that. I mean, I, used, I usually put it on a tape or on a, on a reel-to-reel -reel or a cassette so I have more distance. And I can put more songs on and mix it up a little bit. But um, going back to the artists... This is another great artist, and he's uh, he's a saxophonist. Um, no, actually, he's not. <laughs> he's a composer, but uh, but Jeff Lorber is a keyboardist. But Jeff Lorber is uh, he did Jeff Lorber Fusion, and I've got multiple albums. I have multiple CDs by him, and uh, this stuff's great. Matter of fact, I just sold one of these 
on Discogs that was sealed because when I find the album back in the day, um, I didn't I didn't even foresee um, LPs going away, but at the same time I know the rate that I play these things, and, um, and I, I'd always my favorite albums I'd always get um, in duplicate. Um, and I'd have one and I'd leave it sealed and I just sold a sealed one of these because I don't really need it now um, But I sealed one of these and I think I, I think I sold it for like fifty dollars So uh, so that wasn't that, that was a, a good addition to my uh, my kitty You guys have heard me talk about this and if for nothing else uh, this group has the most amazing artwork on its on its albums and it's called Caldera Look at that. That's incredible. Just to put that on your wall would be incredible. But this stuff is so amazing. And remember, I was talking about Columbia and Capitol also came out with, with audiophile versions. These are all on Capitol, and they're amazing. They're, these, these albums, I got, matter of fact, my buddy had these two. I had never found this one here, and then this one here. And these are right up the same alley, and I just and lost, I guess... I've changed off in a different direction for a little while, but I listened to his and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to have those. So I, I hunted them down on Discogs and Discogs is really good for finding pressings that you don't think any that are out there. And they're actually stuff like this you can get for a song. So it's very inexpensive on the way. Um, another one, another great artist that I love big time is, and he's won several Oscars um, won multiple Grammys. Um, he did. Uh, he he did. Uh, he got a, an Oscar for Tootsie, the themes, the theme song for Tootsie and uh, and the soundtrack. And also he did uh, on Golden Pond, which is another one that I've got to find on LP and I'm still looking for. Uh, if any of you guys have a line on that, let me know. Um, but Dave Grusin is incredible. Um, this he he's been using Lee Rittenour as a guitarist for him on almost every album he's ever done, Out of the Shadows, and this one is a Sheffield Lab. If you know anything about Sheffield Lab or you've listened to me talk about it before, Sheffield Lab is a direct to direct to the cutting lathe um, system. So they sit down and they're playing, and while they're playing. Um, it goes into their mic, goes through an analog board, and goes onto a cutting lathe. So there's really no, there's no tape or master tape involved, which is amazing. And it's very expensive. It was a very expensive and very difficult way of recording because if you make a, a wrong note on one side of the album, uh, all the way at the very end, you have to break the lacquer and start all over again. So these guys are, you know, to, to say that they're not in the same caliber as people like Bill Evans and stuff like this, because he's a keyboardist, and uh, is just you know it's just it's it's a fallacy. Um, these guys are masters at their of their of their craft, um, and there's m multiples out there, so much stuff out there that they did together. Um, so, um, all right, there's another group that I love. I love the Rippingtons, uh, right here. Um, this is the only only one I've got on vinyl, but I have about six or eight on on CD. And here's CDs right here, and these are great albums too. All these are great albums, um, and that's more like Latin uh, jazz, and so is Caldera. So they're very along the same line. I'd say that the Rippingtons is a little bit more melodic. Um, it means follows more melody, but, um, but Caldera is a little bit more, more on the progressive side, but it's still amazing musicianship. M amazing. This is, um, a small amount of the Lee Rittenauer, the one that I told you about that he played guitar for, uh, for Dave Grusin. And remember, I, I came up with a video years ago or a year ago that was talking about how you can go down the rabbit hole with some of these artists because you find them and find somebody else. It's just like Jeff Lorber. When I talked about Jeff Lorber, Kenny G came from there. His name on the credits is Kenny Gorlick, which he wisely changed his name to Kenny G. 
but he is the saxophonist for uh, Jeff Lorber for about four or five albums. So, um, but the guitarist for um, Dave Grusin is Lee Rittenauer, and Lee Rittenauer has got amazing, amazing talent. Um, he he is like this is a promo here. Let's see that promo right there, and then uh, but known as Captain Fingers. And that's why it's called the Captain's Journey. And then, like this is a this is a master disc JVC um, that that was done. It's just incredible. These sounds so amazing. And then this one, I met him at a concert, and he signed let me see, a signature right there in silver sharpie right down there. And uh, and he is amazing in concert, unbelievable. I mean, these guys are such geniuses, and they're playing. A lot of times they'll play things that you know on the album that were very popular, but at the same time, they'll turn around and do some, you know, some unique work, things that they're working on and stuff like that. So you get out ahead of an album, which is amazing. You know, it's just incredible musicianship. Um, speaking of Supergroup, this is Foreplay. And I talked about this, uh, I think, a couple of videos back. Um, and this group has got Lee Rittenauer in it also, but it's, uh, it's Bob James, um, who's the keyboardist, Lee Rittenauer. Um, you've got Harvey Mason on drums and Nathan East on bass. These are the, some of the best players there are ever that ever have played these instruments. Just incredible, incredible musicians. And that album, um, to finish this off as quick as I could. Uh, Bob James, I've been a big fan of, and I actually saw him in concert twice, and he's incredible in concert. If you ever get to see him, you know, go. Um, and, uh, but Bob James always has these, you know, great things, like this is his 10th album. <laughs> Calls it hands down. Um, and then um, this is his fifth album right here, a nickel, <laughs> right? Um, this is a that's a that's a um, this this is an album that he did also and I can't remember which what number this is. I also have multiple other. I just these are just the ones I pulled just for for the video. But also this is another one. You heard me talk about Bob James and and uh, our our Dave Sanborn and this is Bob James and Dave Sanborn. Another beautiful beautiful um, collaboration. So. Anyway, so, you know, you people, you know who you are who shit on uh, uh, smooth jazz. And you need to go back and listen or understand what you're listening to, which I think a lot of you really don't understand. You really don't know what you're talking about. And what it does is it's disparaging to, to new people who could be listening to this stuff and really would love it. Um, it's not pop. It's not, it's not rock. It's absolutely jazz, and to uh, to basically say that the only kind of jazz there has to be is you have to be an old black guy who's dead is, I think, that's outrageous, and it's, in, 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 if for nothing else, you know, racist. So uh, <laughs> since everybody likes to throw that term around, um, I mean, Bill Evans is in that bunch, but at the same time, you know, you had to die before you were 50, and, uh, and um, you, know, you know, put out all this old timey stuff. It's that, that's not just the only genre there is out there to enjoy. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I enjoyed my little rundown with, uh, with uh, smooth jazz and we'll talk to you guys <laughs> soon, okay? Talk to you soon, all my best. Have a great weekend.